lawsuit against you. People were trying to find you. Get out of my face! Time and time again, the CBS2 investigators received tips from viewers who claimed to have been scammed or ripped off. With fraud being difficult for law enforcement to pursue, victims are left empty-handed and confused about what exactly happened to them. One particular tip that jumped out at me was about a woman who turned Chicago into her own playground. The CBS2 investigators take you along in catching Candace Clark. Your impression when you first meet her? Candace? Yeah. Uh, kind, uh, timid, shy. Um, Soft-spoken. Your impression now? A liar. A fake. A psychopath. A sociopath. A thief. A betrayer. There is clearly something special about Candace Clark. Good afternoon. She often stands before a room full of admirers. I appreciate people wanting the same things that I'm wanting and looking for justice the same way that I'm looking for justice. Her resume boasts an undergrad degree in criminology from UIC, an MBA from DePaul, prestigious positions in community service. Director Clark has created a new program called the Robbins Reconstruction Act. All of this is impressive. None of it is true. The UIC degree never happened. MBA from DePaul, nope. All these jobs, no record. Community service, no history. Then raise your right hand. So why is Clark standing before a judge taking an oath? I can't, Clark. Not just once, but often. Affirm. February, May, and November. And the laws of the state of Illinois. Candace Clark is the first African-American woman to hold the director of special investigations position in the state of Illinois. But this is all fake. There is no such position in the state of Illinois. We must document this occasion. So who are these people, and why are they attending a phony ceremony? Why? Because Candace Clark hired them. Rich Daniels, City Lights Orchestra. With the strength to carry on. Singer Suzanne Palmer. In the audience, extras sent by a local casting company. And repeat after me. Remember the judge? And raise your right hand. Independent film actress Jamie Newell. You burned a building down with a lame stunt. Just another minute, folks. Newell actually helped produce some of the ceremonies, design the flyers, and introduce Clark to other performers, a decision she now regrets. It really broke my heart. <laughs> Newell says she fell for the elaborate tale Clark weaved about judges and state officials I can not being available for Clark's swearing-in ceremonies, so she was given permission to hire actors. In order for her to begin her job with the state, she needed to be sworn in and that the swearing-in needed to be um, videotaped. There was just something about her that made you like her? Yeah. Yeah. You have to be scratching your head by now and wondering why did Clark do this? What was she after? That was that was simply my question and every other actor's question. Why? 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 The only explanation that I've heard that seems to make sense is that she was trying to create enough proof of who she was and the selfless acts that she was doing for the state. Um, that they were going to then get wonderful um, donations from large corporations. That's what she told you. Um, that's what. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and the. That, that was, you think that she would be able to get donations based on proving to a corporation that she is who she is. So you think she was she was ultimately going to try and scam corporations? Absolutely. And also, did you know the Great Lakes Naval? Huh. You know, the Great Lakes Naval Academy brought in um, a group to do, um, to be the color guards. For when? For which event was this? UIC. For the, for the one that you produced? Yes. H how many actors again, would you say? And, and how much were the actors supposed to be paid and were they paid? No, nobody has been paid. Nobody? Nobody has been paid. And there are people like my, uh, I had a, uh, a translator 
who had to give up. She gave up a workshop, you know, somebody who signed the program. Um, I had a woman who teaches for um, special needs. She was the singer at the program. She gave up that day of teaching. So they not only didn't get paid, they lost money of the things they were supposed to do on those days that they, you know, so um how much were they supposed to get paid well each person is different uh, you know the singer got paid different it, it, roughly between 350 to 800 dollars you know for an event and, so in no one got paid no money passed through anyone's hands and i'm honored to i felt proud that she was the first african-american in this position a pleasure and, a privilege. and to know that it was all a fake a hoax Add up what Clark owes Newell, the singers, musicians, casting company, sign language interpreter, and extras, is nearly $21,000. In late October, Newell finally learned from a friend Clark never worked for the government and everyone had been duped. I was blown away. I was mortified. I was shocked. I don't understand people that do stuff like this. I went undercover at one of the ceremonies looking for answers. My iPhone video is a little shaky because I'm nervous as Clark is walking toward me. I think I've been made. I'm sorry, but this is supposed to be an invitation. She couldn't figure out how she knew me, but she knew she didn't hire me. She politely asked me to leave. And we don't even know who invited you. So. I was kicked out. No problem. I left, but soon returned to confront Clark. There's a civil suit against you. People were trying to find you. Not in my face. Can you guys stop? No, I'd like, I'd like her to answer okay. some questions. I'm gonna ask the main question, why produce this elaborate hoax? We're not the only ones asking. I just want to understand, like, what's the purpose? The question comes from members of the Moore's Science Temple of America. I believe justice is justice. They believed Clark was a prominent state official because they had attended her ceremonies. We were believing that this woman would be of assistance to us. And the community. At the time, they had no idea most of these people were actors. And Director Clark has created a new program. Reading from a script Clark had written. This is one. Then one of them came across this Facebook post calling Clark a scammer. They now wonder if they were her next target. Very displeased. Just very displeased. She got me good. Darlene Simmons posted that Facebook message. She got me good. Simmons met Clark in 2014. At the time, Clark was pretending to be a real estate agent, showing her several places. So Simmons had poor credit, so Clark offered to use Simmons' money but put the house in her name. The following year, she'll have it turned over in my name. As you might imagine, Simmons never got a new home, and she ended up losing $73,000 to Clark. Oh, she's a devil. That 401k, I worked 40 years at the Tribune 4. 40 years to have it taken from me. I was not expecting all of this. How could you do that? I wasn't prepared. This woman, who has lied about her resume, pretended to be a state employee and a real estate agent, is a graduate of Percy Julian High School and a two-time felon for fraud and impersonating a police officer. Candace didn't start with me, and she's not going to end with me. To get a better understanding of Clark's past, we have to take a trip down memory lane, back to high school. Right here. Okay. That's her. Back then, she was Candace Dixon, student, Percy Julian High School, member of Big Brothers and Sisters, the modeling club, math team. I remember her walking to class, going to class and everything, but I really didn't socialize with her. A former classmate who chose not to be identified says early on there were signs Candace might be headed down a different path. Well, she was Team USA. That's what was told to us, you know, by her. She had the crown, the sash, a picture to prove it. Miss Teen Illinois, 1987. Only there's one little problem. A 1987 Miss Teen USA pageant. We found the video with all the state winners, including Miss Illinois. Danielle Reese, Riverwood, Illinois. Surprise, surprise, it was not Candace. But Candace Clark is not in high school anymore. Some would argue that Clark is best known for wreaking havoc on Chicagoland homeowners. Let's take you back to January 2020. The thunder is not of Cook County Sheriff's officers. An intimidating sound to most. Hello? Sweet music to Fiore Hadera's ears. Now I am happy. 
It happened today. I am just, I can't. You see, this is her house. The sheriff's officers are here to help her take it back. So to finally be here. Yeah, this is a nice feeling. But it was hell for four months. I don't know, we have bad feeling. Hadera and her husband advertised their urban north side mansion for several thousand dollars a month. Clark had her eyes on the prize. She'd signed a lease to pay $9,000 a month, but never paid a penny. You gave the realtor the keys, the realtor had the yes. keys. Mm -hmm. And you'd gone over and spent $5,000 to clean the place and to paint it. And then uh, there was a tent broken. You had to re make some repairs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And doors. Changed the locks. Mm -hmm. Clark then gave Hedera the check she was waiting for. She gave you an $18,000 so check? It's a fraud check, yeah. Forged. Uh -huh. Fake. Fake. When did you find the out? The number doesn't match. Even normal person, when he see when you see the check, cutting, passing, you know, she did it by herself. There is no normal check like that. So at that moment, when you realize she's giving you a fake check, we called her. Candace, why uh, the check is fraud? And she said, "Oh, I lost my check." All my checks, I lost it. Clark looked good on paper. She had a state job, an annual income of $288,000, and a credit score of 734. The problem? It was all a lie. One thing is for certain, Clark will never live here again. But the five-bedroom, five-bath, $2.5 million mini mansion is not the house Hedera left. I can't believe it. Liquor bottles littered the floor. Wow. It reeks of cigarette smoke, spoiled food. They damage, damage everything. They didn't clean. The back door? They broke it. And they left behind many of their belongings, including something you won't believe. Hadera found this printer. And then there were these. Phony Bank of America checks. Each one of them with the same check number. What was Clark up to? You decide. Here's what we do know. At least two of Clark's victims showed us bounced checks with the same check number as the fake ones found in the house. We lost almost 50,000. Hadera is not the only homeowner Clark is accused of swindling. Since 2016, the CBS2 investigators confirmed Clark has been evicted from eight locations, modest condos to luxury mansions, cheating landlords out of nearly a quarter of a million dollars. But it's not just homeowners. Clark also targeted those looking for somewhere to live, too. She's evil. She's a monster. Stanita Ware was one of the few willing to go on camera. <laughs> and her story dates back two decades. I had to share my story because it didn't start just now. This happened 20 years ago. Ware was a college student with a two-year-old son when she says she was conned by Clark. Back then, Clark was pretending to work for a nonprofit that helped young mothers buy homes. She was awesome. She seemed like she really cared about my life. Ware ended up giving Clark more than $3,000. What person can sleep at night knowing that I'm taking money from this woman's child? Ware not only had a compelling story. Is that you? That's me. She had video. And I want to thank you for coming out. That's Candace. I don't know what to say. Clark was at a ceremony being honored for her work. Yes, because I didn't know that people thought of me that way. <laughs> That's all fake. It's a honor to be here. But at the time, a young weir praised her friend with a poem. A good friend and a mentor. So those titles best describes you. I was really excited for my friend and to know that it was all fake. All right. That hurts. I try to do what I can for young women. Over the years, a lot of people claim to have been hurt by Clark. One viewer sent us this 2007 police report from Hazelcrest. The complaint? Candace Clark was posing as a law enforcement officer and selling goods police had confiscated from drug dealers. The accuser says she gave Clark $6,000 and got nothing in return. Altogether, we identified 86 people in companies that have lost money to Clark. 
Added up, the total comes to a whopping $469,000. Between 2008 and 2010, Clark was arrested six times in Chicago in three other suburbs. She's faced charges of theft, writing bad checks, and impersonating a police officer. It's her high. She, she's not going to stop. It's in her blood. The most Clark ever got was probation. This time, Clark's accusers are hoping the outcome is different. So, including the latest one, Stephanie Bennett, who now lives in Texas. She, she cost me my home. I, lo I, I lost my home. Bennett is not exaggerating. She was just 27 years old in 2010 when she bought this $225,000 house in suburban Midlothian. Like, look what I accomplished. Five years later, Bennett was moving out of town, so she rented her home to Clark for $2,000 a month. It was, it was awful. It was an awful experience. For eight months, Clark lived rent free. When she left, the place was a mess and Bennett was $16,000 in the hole. I couldn't keep up with the payment of someone trashing my home and then the repairs that would need to be done. Um, I had to go into foreclosure and then Bennett now echoes what others have said when asked about Clark's future and the next place she should call home. Behind bars for a while, a long while. Chicago police arrested Candace Clark on January 17th, 2020. I had been tracking her trail and talking to her victims for weeks leading to her arrest, listening to their emotional and painful stories of losing thousands of dollars to Clark. My supervisor called me and I can hear her, Darlene, they got her, they got her. Police got Clark, nailed her at a Gold Coast Starbucks. Before I knew it, I just, I couldn't hold back the tears. I'm between a rock and a hard place, but right now, I don't mind being there because they got her. Clark got caught just after 10 a.m. Police called her cell. She answered while inside the Starbucks. They say she was wearing a hat, T-shirt, and carrying fake IDs. They got her, and I'm, no, I can't do this. <laughs> the timing of her arrest, shortly after my previous stories appeared on TV and in social media, is no surprise to CBS2 legal analyst Irv Miller. I think the fact that you're doing this and letting the public know about it will light a fire under the police department. Uh, this is called a heater case now that Channel 2 is interested in this particular topic. Clark ended up spending two weeks behind bars at the Cook County Jail following her arrest. Her bail was set at $15,000. On January 31st, Clark's sister bailed her out. On February 13th, Clark appeared at the Circuit Court of Cook County, a real opportunity to actually see and talk to Clark in person. I got there bright and early to catch up with her. What do you say to those people? Candace. Candace Clark was probably surprised to see our camera outside the courthouse because she was early. It was only 10 o'clock and she didn't have to be here until 1130. Courthouse rules restrict reporters and cameras to a roped off area against the wall. Candace. So I had to shout my questions and hope Clark would stop. Candace, don't you want to say something to all of those people who are accusing you of ripping them off? You know you have evidence to say that you're wrong. Instead of explaining further, Clark kept walking. We caught her peeking outside the courtroom, Ms. Tucker, mm -hmm. where judge was expected to formally read the charges against her. Only the assistant state's attorney asked for a continuance. Court was over in less than a minute. My turn now for follow-up questions. What's wrong with my story? Why do no you comment. say why do you say they're wrong? Over the past year, Clark was scheduled to appear in court multiple times via Zoom, but some of the time she just didn't bother to show up. There was always an excuse. She couldn't operate her phone. She had heart issues. She was uh, rushed to the hospital with COVID-related symptoms. Finally, on February 16th, Clark appeared before the judge, and that was the day prosecutors offered a deal. Plead guilty to all six counts and go to jail for four and a half years. Clark rejected the deal despite a lot of evidence against her. Question for you, what have you been doing the last couple of years? I'm sick clean. The charges against Candace Clark came after several of our investigations showing how she carried out her scams. We even got our hands on some of the evidence. Raise your right hand. 
Two of the criminal charges against Clark are connected to these videos. And the laws of the state of Illinois. Where she put on several fake ceremonies pretending to be a high-ranking state official. For this, she got a felony charge for impersonating a state employee. Candace Clark is the first African-American woman to hold the director of special investigations position in the state of Illinois. Several theft charges are also connected to these productions because no one got paid. We were watching $10,000 go out the door every, every month. In this scam, the landlord wanted to remain anonymous, but his lost rent is another felony tied to Clark in her rental schemes. We lost almost 50000 Have you been paying rent the last couple of Would years? You please move. We got a glimpse into how Clark wound up with the keys to several homes from something we found in a house she got evicted from years before. She left all this behind. Look at this. She printed out a background report and then glued her name to the email line. Those aren't the only fake documents we discovered during our investigation. Sheriff's Department! After she got evicted from the last luxury home, we found a printer she left behind. Then there were these. Phony Bank of America checks. Two landlords who got taken for thousands complained to authorities about receiving fake checks. David Drewicki is Clark's attorney. They discussed the state's plea deal. Were you surprised you turned it down? Uh, no, I wouldn't say that I was surprised because up to and including walking into the courtroom conversations we had, it's solely up to her. Dorothy, could you please move? I don't feel well. Please, I'm literally about ready to throw up. Your attorney talked to you about the plea deal, though. Is that making you want to throw up? No, you make me want to throw up. Please leave me alone. Why did Clark reject the deal? Well, when I finally cornered her outside of the courtroom where cameras are not allowed, she spoke up. She said, I did nothing wrong. And she went on to say, I will fight the charges until the end. Clark's trial is scheduled for April 18th.